fuck with the G's Cause I like the way we flow with me Joes You know me, but we don't care about the hoes What up, yo? <laughs> I ain't black But I can act black And I don't care about crack I just play whack and I don't give a fuck I just want my bicycle back And I'ma ride to the fucking east side G's the hellos and mock the cellos And I don't give a fuck about yellows But you know me and I know you And we don't give a fuck about the juice and the crew But the fucking juice I sing it, the fucking juice I speed With the fuck with me, me, you gonna fuck with me I'll bring the G's up if you wanna skeet up Yo, fuck you bitch, I'll bring the heat up <laughs> okay, so as you can tell, I'm in a, where am I? What does this look like? We have a bed here, and we have a bed over here. What does that mean? That means I'm in a hotel. Why am I in a hotel? Don't ask me, because I'm not going to tell you. I am not going to tell you. See, okay, here's what's going on right now. I have a camera here that I have to look into and talk to, plus I have a friggin' mirror. There's a mirror so I'm seeing myself double, and when I put this hand up, it shows up on this side of the screen, but it's on the opposite side in my mirror. Let me just flip this shit around and show you what I'm talking about. I guess I can't really show you, but you know what I'm saying, bro. You know what I'm saying. Okay. We are in a hotel, fucking with Dell. No more rapping, please. No more rapping. Oh, just lost a power source. Okay, I got a book. I don't have the cards here, but I've been writing. I've been writing ideas down in this book here. Of what I want to talk about. For those who don't know, um, the idea of the show is to is to just talk about topics that I uh, write down throughout the week, or whatever. Usually the day before I do a podcast. But, I've been away here, doing stuff. I'll just tell you, I'm, I'm working, okay? I have a job outside of YouTube, obviously. And that's, uh, because I'm obviously not making money on YouTube. Hopefully it'll happen eventually, but it's not happening right now. And you know why it's not happening right now? Because I've only got 154 subscribers. Right now, Sunday, January 4th, 7.57, 7.58 p.m., I have 154 subscribers, which is nothing. But it's somewhere. Uh, hopefully, we can push our way to 100 million that's my goal. 100 million subscribers. You in? Subscribe right now. We're in it. To win it. Uh, let's see. Okay, we do have a timer. Oh, good, good, good. We are in a hotel. No, should I say what hotel? There's no one else here. Ringy dingy. I've got a ting a lingy. Oh boy. Okay, let's jump right into this then. Uh-huh. Oh, it's episode 15. Episode 15, y'all. We're almost at 20. Uh, spiders are back. Remember in the last episode, episode 14, which was... A, when did that... It feels like a while ago. I was uploaded on a rate almost... It was every second day I was uploading. But now that I'm here, I can't do that. Um, but my, sp remember, okay, the spiders, in the last episode, I said there was, there was a spider made a web on the satellite dish outside my bathroom window, and then I squirted some shaving cream and hit the spider, knocked him off the web, never came back the next day, and the web was all destroyed and full of shaving cream, and I felt bad because I wanted to watch the spider catch catch some bugs and eat them. Ooh, Pop gives me the burps, y'all. But anyway, the spider is back. He rebuilt his web and he brought a bunch of buddies with him. 
he's got like there's like six spiders there I'll take a picture of it when I come back home if they're still there but there's at least six spiders they all have their own web attached to the satellite dish and I'm like what the hell's going on there was nobody here yesterday now there's six of them here so I'm thinking that one guy got pissed off at me and he brought a gang of motherfuckers and he's saying if you mess with me again we gonna beat your ass that's what he's saying I bet you that spider is coming for me. So I left. That's why I'm at this hotel. I'm not actually working. I left. I had to leave and come to this hotel to get away from the spiders. Because they're going to attack me. They're going to beat me up. I'm going to die. What are you looking at? <laughs> so while I'm here, um, the first, like, three days were not fun. Because, you know, well, at least with me, I don't know about other people, but I know that there's a lot of people out there. When you're away from home, uh, you get this homesickness, anxiety, and all this crap, all this baloney. Uh, and I've been dealing with that a lot throughout my whole life, and I just want to talk about some ways to cope with it. Um... So one thing I like to do, like let's say, let's use my situation as the current example. So I am away from my uh, hometown in a city. I'm familiar with the city that I'm in. I'm not going to say what city it is, but I'm in a city. Um, and I'm working, okay? I'm living in a hotel. So all your shit's at home, your cat's at home, your family's at home. You just got a little bit of your stuff here to keep you calm, to make it feel at least a little bit like home. But that's, you know, you still get depressed. You still get anxiety. You still get uh, homesickness. So what I like to do is not set your expectations too high. That's one of the, th this is the first uh, technique I'm going to talk about. Not setting your expectations too high. If you set them too high, you have nowhere to go but down. So, what do you do? So I'm in this hotel, and I say to myself, I'm not gonna... I expect... I go into the day thinking... You don't go into the day thinking this is gonna suck, and I'm gonna hate this. You can, that's usually what happens because because whatever, whatever your situation is, you usually think that way. But then by the time you get there, you realize it's not that bad. And then, of course, you're setting it. Then, then, you, then you go. So then you start going up because you got that room. You know, you set the bar low, even really low. Even if you want to set it at extreme low, <laughs> where you say, I hate this, I want to go home. You can do that gonna make you feel miserable in that moment but when you get into the situation you, you got room to go up so you're gonna go there and be like oh this isn't that bad this isn't what I expected if you if you put it in your mind okay this shit's gonna happen if I if I do this we're gonna be working late tonight we're gonna um, we're gonna be missing our break it's gonna be so hot out today well this is gonna be so shitty and then you get there and then you start to realize oh it's actually not that hot out today. It's kind of rainy. And, oh, we do get our breaks today. And, oh, we actually got we got called off early because of uh, whatever. Things, things will happen opposite as to what you expected. And when that happens, it makes you f feel better. Because you, uh, because like I said, you got that room to go up. But let's say you start high. And you got people who, tell, who say, Go into these situations telling yourself, um, oh, it's going to be good. I'm going to have a good day and all that crap. But here's what happens when you do that. So let's say I'm like, oh, today's going to be a great day. I'm going to go to work with a smile. I'm going to have my break. I'm going to eat my lunch. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to get a free ride. I'm going to show up on time. All this bullshit. You, you go to work, okay? You get there, you're eating your lunch, you got guys talking to you, and 
your boss is like, oh, can you come here for a sec from your lunch break? Then you, because you set your expectations high, now you, you're expecting everything to go well. But then these little things come come into play, come in your way, and uh, and of course you set it too high. So now you gotta you gotta go downwards. You can't go up any higher because you you're already at the highest level you can go. So anything that comes your way is gonna seem negative. But if you start negative, you're gonna have to go up to positive. And that's one of the ways that I like to look at things. Just thought I'd bring that up. So another uh, thing, one other thing I like to do is uh, keep track of your days. So let's say you're there for two weeks. Every day in your phone or whatever, or even on Facebook, just write like day one, day two, day three. And the days go by and eventually you'll be like, oh, it's day 12. Um, I don't know. It's, for some reason it just helps a little bit. Also, uh, just uh, communicate with people, talk to them, have a conversation, because everyone else you're working with is in the same situation, if they're on uh, away from home as well, working. Might not be the case, they might already live in the city you're in, where you're working away. Or whatever your situation is. This, this applies to anything. Anytime you're homesick. Even on vacation. And some people like to think ahead and be like, oh, think about how good it's going to be when you go home. Well, and, you know, spend time with your pet and your family and whatever. You start thinking about that and it just makes you miss home even more. Um, so I guess I can't remember what the other techniques are, but if I think of them throughout the podcast, I'll bring them up, I'll say them. Um, kidney stones is the next topic, I don't know why I put that down. But I know in my family, my family, my grandfather had, has kidney stones, and my mother just had one, so I'm like, god damn it, that means I'm gonna get one. I'm gonna get a fucking kidney stone, and I... I can't believe, I don't want that. It's going to be painful, I can just imagine. I mean, I know, you know, they're hereditary, you see it in your family. I'm probably going to get one. Plus, they're pretty common. But I heard, I hear, if you drink a lot of water, and it ain't that, you know, it, it lowers your uh, chance of getting a kidney stone. I didn't do too much research on it, but I remember hearing that from someone. Ooh, baby, baby. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I was thinking about ghosts. I watched the the newest H3 podcast, the one with, uh, who was it? Oh, yeah, Ian Heckox, Heck, Heck you know, from Smosh, and Smoosh, uh, and uh, Markiplier. And then, you know, they were talking about ghosts again. They said it's going to be their thing, and they can talk about ghosts. I don't think I'm going to I, think it, I know I talked about it in the previous episode. I can't remember which episode. Now, this episode might be a bit short. Because by the time I get home from work, I only have so many hours before I have to go to bed because I'm going to wake up early again the next day. So, this, this happens to be a day where I came home early enough to do this. So I figured I better do it. Because I wanted to at least do one while I'm away. I didn't want to wait till I woke up until I got home. Because like I said, like I've said before, if you want to be successful on YouTube, one, probably the most important thing is consistency. You have to have consistency with your uploads. You can't upload once every month, once every couple of months. You know, at least once a week, at least once a week, any less than that is, well, you could still do it, some people get away with uploading like once a month, they don't get the potential views that they could be getting, 
if they were to upload some stuff. So, but also uploading content like every day sometimes isn't a good thing because people don't want too much content because people don't have time to watch everything constantly. You know what I mean? If you upload like two videos a day, I know some people do that. I think Markiplier said he does that two a day. Like, that's a lot of videos. You really need to pump that many videos out. That's a lot. And people are going to start getting sick of it. And watch. Whoa. Just a good idea right for a second. So I just watch two Markiplier videos. There's two more every day. I think once a week is good. Maybe three times a week. I would like to do it three times a week. I was doing every uh, second day of the week until I came out here. Once I go back, it's going to go back into that routine. Because they're uh, fun to do. I like doing these podcasts. Eventually, I'm going to get better. Blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, ghosts. I lost track here. Ghosts. I was thinking about ghosts, and if they were, I'm not saying they're real, I'm not saying they're not real, I'm not saying I believe or don't believe. Uh, no, I really don't know. But I'm more on the non belief side. But if, I was just thinking, if they happen to be real, what if it was just. Because we can't perceive the fourth dimension at all. We can't see it. We can't do anything with it. So what if the ghosts are just, uh, after you die, you transition into the fourth dimension. And when you're in the fourth dimension, sometimes things happen where whatever happens, somehow paths cross, and you can see the ghost, see the person in the fourth dimension, and sometimes hear it, whatever, but it's just some sort of glitch in the universe where we have access to the fourth dimension a little bit. Because uh, if you think, uh, Carl Sagan explained it really well, how people in the two dimension can't see people in the third dimension. So picture uh, this, this card here, it's nice and flat, okay? All they have is uh, length and width. They don't have height. They can't go up and down. They only go left and right. Boop, 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 boop. Okay? They can't look up or down. Can't go up, can't go down. They can only move. I said that, I already said that, okay? So, and then you've got this fist in the third dimension. It can go up and down, it can do whatever it wants, but people in the third dimension can't see it, but they could hear it. They can do, you know, and if you were to roll, they wouldn't see a ball, they would just see a flat, the flat imprint that the ball leaves on the ground. And they'd be like, what is that? What the fuck is this thing? You know, it would show up, and then it would just disappear, because it could float away in the third dimension. Fourth dimension, we can't even comprehend what it would be like because we live in the third dimension. So when a ghost, so you die, you end up in the fourth dimension. I'm not saying I believe in this. It was just an idea that came to me, and I want to share. I know, I know, people have probably brought this up before. I'm guaranteed they have. Wow! Who here has a drone? If you have a drone, type in the comments and say, I have an expensive drone. I don't want you to tell me you have a cheap ass $100 drone or a $20 drone or anything less than 600 bucks, 700 bucks, anything less, no, anything less than 900 bucks. Do not tell me about it. If you have something over 900 bucks, tell me about it. Tell me about it. Now, Bill Burr was on a recent episode of uh, Joe Rogan Experience. I watched it. He was promoting his newest season of F is for Family, which I really recommend. 
but they were talking about how Amazon uh, Amazon plans on using drones to deliver packages. And he was mentioning about shooting them down with guns, hillbillies and stuff, because it would be a, a law that you could, or it, it already is a law that you can shoot drones down if they enter your yard. But what if, if, if Amazon does do this drone delivery service thing, what the fuck? Like, it seems like a great idea, but it would be so easy to just fucking shoot that shit down and take the package. Anybody could. And it's gonna happen. People are just gonna shoot drones out of the sky. No way, there's no way the majority of them are going to make their destination. Unless they come up with a great plan. I mean, it's a great idea if people weren't uh, pricks. Because you know people are going to shoot them down. You know people are going to steal the packages. You, know, you could say you could put cameras on them. Well, cameras are already on them, but if you shoot the thing and they take it, you can't, it, you know, they could shoot it and destroy the footage. It's not, I don't know, I just don't see it working. And I'm try I tried to think of a way for it to work, where people just, either they could, they've, they'd probably have to fly high enough that, that a gun wouldn't be able to shoot that far. They have to fly so high that you couldn't see them. You'd either see like a speck in the air or you just wouldn't see them at all because they were so high. Then like, well, I mean, I guess, I don't know if airplanes would hit them because they could still fly lower than the airplane height. but still high enough that a, that a gun can't shoot them down. I don't even know if that's possible. Because you'd probably still be able to shoot them down. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. I guess it could work if they just flew high enough. What do I know? What do I know? I mean, I'm sure they have. I know they have people out there who are trying to figure out the best method. I don't even know. How long Amazon's been talking about this? But I know it's been like more than two years now. Hearing about it. Drones. They were talking about drones. Drone delivery service before drones were even a thing. I remember there's... Yeah. Well, that's all I got. This is a 23 minute podcast. Nothing I can do, buddy. Nothing I can do there, boy. Nothing I can do. <laughs> I can only write down so much because I'm working. Fuck. So, uh, if you go to university, I've been to, to college multiple times. Uh, you go to college. Jeez uh, Louise, Poppy. You go to college. Um, if it's your first, if you go to college or university right out of high school, you're 18, you never lived alone, you lived with your parents your whole life, and then you just go from that and snap right into a new province or state, country, and you're alone. That is some scary shit. Unless you're, uh, if, if you have the anxiety like I have, have. But, you know, there's people out there who are just rock solid. You could fucking throw them in the middle of the Amazon jungle. And they wouldn't get homesick. I know people like that. They just go wherever. It doesn't bother them. Even when they were a kid. If I went to... I did go to summer camp. And I, went, I hated it. I had to get out of there. I was like, I gotta leave. Get me the fuck out of this place. I don't want to be here. There is nothing I wanted to do with summer camp. I wanted out. But, uh, 
doing that, you know, doesn't uh, build confidence. When you do that stuff as a kid, leave, you know, quit things like that. You develop this idea as a kid where you're just like, oh, well, I could just quit, you know. And then you grow up and it's, you still got that mindset from a kid where you're just like, oh, I don't like something, I just quit it. You know, and your parents will say, oh, so, you know, you gotta stick with it, blah, 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 blah. It's where you stick with it, and yeah, it is, okay? But you, if you can uh, do what you want, if you wanna leave, you wanna leave. Because you'll eventually end up where you're supposed to be. Something will happen. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll end up in a swamp and die. Or maybe you won't. But if you do, remember. Eat your oranges because you don't want scurvy. <laughs>